So which are the units in your army that are going to be seeing the most time on the shelf in 9th edition? Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, the strategy focused 40k channel, where today we're looking through every faction and army and talk about which units frequently just aren't going to make the cut into stronger lists. A few months ago I did a similar video talking about the strongest units of each faction in 40k, so I thought it could be quite fun to look at the flip side, talk about some of the units that just don't see games quite as frequently, and could perhaps do with some improvements to actually see more time on the table. For the purpose of keeping the video interesting, I've decided we're going to go for more core battle line damage dealing units than things like characters or fortifications. There are a lot of characters in Warhammer 40k, and it's really quite frequent that some of them aren't pointed very well, and there's often redundant ones within the same codex, so I just didn't want this list to be full of characters. And I'll also be ignoring fortifications as well, as again the vast majority of faction specific ones just really aren't all that good, and the rules really punish fortifications at the moment. We're also just going to be looking within the codex this time, again even with the new Imperial Armour Compendium, Forge World does have a lot of units that are just completely redundant. Finally, before we start, I just wanted to mention small units, which I did do a video on before, but basically small cheap units that are 50 points or less can often be really quite helpful assets to the army. They might not do very well in terms of points to damage, but often wind up being taken in competitive lists anyway, because they can do actions, screen objectives, jump in table quarters, that sort of thing. For that reason, units like Demon Furies, Admech Servitors, Sister Battle Death Cult Assassins, are all far stronger than their kind of mediocre damage output would really indicate. That's why I haven't chosen to include all that many tiny units on the list. In any case, looking forward to hearing your opinions, and if you think that I've missed anything for your given faction that really is no use whatsoever, please let me know down in the comments below. So let's start off with the Space Marines then. In general, the Marines are doing very well, but perhaps one of the least impressive units for the points might be the Land Raider. Despite gaining the ability to fire into close combat if it gets tagged now, 9th edition really hasn't been too kind to these venerable tanks. Transport capacity just really isn't that big an issue when most things can just walk and advance almost as fast as they would as if they were embarked. If you tag them in close combat, then their firepower will still be ruined. They'll have to fire everything against the unit that tags them, which they probably don't want to do. And with a 2 plus armor and toughness 8, their durability is okay, but it's really not all that exceptional for the points that you invest. Overall, we've got a unit that doesn't do great damage, doesn't really have a great function as a transport, and when fired at by dedicated anti-tank fire, isn't even all that tough to take down. Generally, I think that Land Raiders are perhaps one of the weaker options in the whole Space Marine Codex. Otherwise, a few things that I'd like to mention as honourable mentions are the Gladiator Lancer. Perhaps looks the nicest out of the Gladiator variants, though its anti-tank damage output is really quite shocking, it doesn't even beat a standard last cannon predator. Assault Marines are almost directly made redundant by Vanguard veterans, an extra couple of points for far better melee damage output is amazing, plus the Vanguard veterans get Storm Shields and really flexible and cheap power weapons. Finally, Scouts have really taken a lot of flack from the new Codex, I still think that they would be used, but again they're pretty much entirely redundant due to Incursors and Infiltrators who have Obsec, are tougher, and don't really cost all that many more points. To be honest, Space Brain units aren't really all that bad on the whole, it's more the fact that they have a massive range, and it just means that some things are going to be redundant behind others. In terms of the unique options for the more specialised Space Marine chapters, I thought we'd just focus on the ones with bigger ranges that had their own standalone codexes in 8th edition. For Blood Angels, I'd mention the Bar Predator, a very cool tank that I own three of, but like most Predators, it hasn't really been all that strong since the start of 8th, and it has almost no synergy with Blood Angels as an entirely assault-based faction. For Death Watch, I mentioned the Corvus Black Star for similar reasons. It's not terrible, but it doesn't really do a lot different to the other Space Marine Flyers, and again, it doesn't have tons of synergy within the Death Watch Codex. The Strike teams can deep strike anyway, so its transport is a little bit redundant, and most Death Watch bonuses and combos work around kill teams and infantry working in concert. For the Space Wolves, it's the Flyers again that I'm not the biggest fan of. The Storm Wolf and Storm Fang just have really quite high points costs for what they do, both clocking in at over 300 points no longer having quite as powerful stratagems as in 8th, and not being all that hard to shoot down either. And for Dark Angels, I must admit I struggle to choose out of their non-character unique units. Most of their unique options are honestly pretty great, and work well with their army strategy. The best I could come up with was perhaps the Landspeed of Vengeance, which isn't really a bad anti-tank platform, and I've got to love that enormous plasma gun, 
but it's maybe just a bit fragile for the points, and it's also competing against some very strong competition from the rest of the Dark Angels Codex. Moving on, we come to the Imperial Guard, where the one I've chosen for the worst is the Deathstrike Missile, the thing that looks like an ICBM that should take out half the opponent's army, but has a fairly good chance of never getting to fire before it gets shot, and even when it does, you might well get a thoroughly disappointing amount of mortal wounds for the trouble. This thing just has a really good chance of never getting to fire, or firing far too late for it to actually make any difference in game. Often you don't care if you've blown up a chunk of enemy units on turn 4, as every chance of the game might well have been decided by that point. Otherwise, the guard do have quite a few units that are a bit subpar at the moment. My picks for honourable mentions would be the Ogryn, their points cost is absolutely terrible, and they struggle to even compete against standard infantry squads in terms of both shooting and combat. The fact that they're now only 5 points less than Bulgrim makes them look like a complete joke, and I'm still really not sure what possessed people to balance them that way. My other pick would be the Weird Vein Psychers, basically investing points in casters who can both be targeted directly by the enemy without character protection, and cast powers very unreliably on top of that. They do have a somewhat niche use in using the stratagem with the primary Psyker, but even then I'm not really convinced of that investment compared with just buying very cheap Astropaths who still cast perfectly well. For the forces of the Adeptus Mechanicus, we have the Transvector. Both of the other Archaeopter variants are pretty decent, but the transport variant basically does transport and little else, and with only 6 slots to carry passengers, it just means that you'll really struggle to fit in a unit that's actually going to achieve all that much meaningful. You're always going to be investing far more in the transport than you do in the cargo that's inside it. For that reason, people almost always tend to use the Dune Rider that I've seen, and if you want to play with Archaeopter shenanigans, you might be much better off with the Fuselav, who can bomb an infantry unit into oblivion with its mortal wound bomb each turn as well. For just a few points more, I think it's a far better way to go if you're playing with Archaeopters. To be honest though, the Admech Codex is really quite well balanced at the moment. Almost every unit competing well and having okay uses. Perhaps as an honourable mention, I'd put things like Rust Stalkers and perhaps Servitors. The Rust Stalkers just don't really do all that much in close combat where they want to get to, but they still do have the potential for doing important actions in tournament games, being able to redeploy around the flanks of the enemy in a single turn, making them pretty good for snatching deploy scramblers or something. Perhaps a good example of a unit with underwhelming stats that can still make itself useful. Up next we have the Grey Knights. And for these guys, I just wanted to focus on the standard Space Marine Dreadnought, that I think has long struggled for a role within the Codex, particularly when they have the Dread Knight, which Games Workshop has made efforts to keep kind of good for the entire time it's existed. They also don't have a ton of synergy with the rest of the army, not being psychers or being able to use some of the best options, and are perhaps relegated to an anti-tank platform at best, though this is usually better as venerable Dreadnoughts who hit on twos. I think it's quite rare that you'd actually see just a standard normal Dreadnought in a Grey Knight list. Otherwise, as before, and as with almost every Space Marine related faction, I think that Land Raiders aren't particularly helpful in Grey Knights, for reasons we've already mentioned. For the Adeptus Custodes, it's the Venerable Land Raider again for me. Hitting on twos isn't bad, and at least it can get re-rolls at the moment, but again the damage output isn't stellar, it can be tagged in close combat, and it kind of doubles down on the Custodes problem of body count by hoovering up quite a lot more points all in one model. For honourable mentions, perhaps the Wardens don't compete amazingly with Custodian Guard right now. They don't fill up a troop slot for detachments, and the extra price tag I'm just not sure is worth it for plus one extra attack, and the feel no pain. In particular, with Storm Shield still giving Custodian Guard a 3 plus inball save, I think that they're the way to go at the moment. Finally, I'd just like to quickly mention Witch Seekers, I think they're perhaps the weakest of the three Sisters of Silence units. The main reason you want to take Sisters of Silence is for a cheap unit that can provide some nice anti psyker these make that unit really quite expensive with those flamers, kind of mean that you have to throw them right to the front of the army, and when they get there, all they do is a bunch of strength 4 hits, which is not good with how fragile they are for 18 points a model. Moving on to Sisters of Battle now, and again I feel that they're another very well balanced codex. I think Games Workshop has made pains to make almost all the models useful in their more recent releases, but I wound up settling on the Arco Flagellants, just because I feel they're outcompeted by Repenture the hammer blow unit that you can put in a rhino right now. Don't get me wrong, I think that these guys are okay, just their damage output is really slanted towards infantry, and anything with high saves is going to give them a lot of trouble. I don't think they'll see quite as much play for just random objective grabbers or action units such as death cult assassins or crusaders either, as their minimum unit size is a bit more expensive. Talking of those though, if it wasn't for just being annoying units to do table quarters, actions and screening, then death cult assassins and crusaders would be my next picks. In particular, Crusaders following the Storm Shield nerf to being only a 4 plus invul save, 
really struggle for a place in the army. They do very little damage in close combat for the points cost with their strength 4 power swords. Next we come to the Imperial Knights, and the one I decided to choose was the Knight Valiant, as the close quarters Lance and Flamer Knight is certainly one of the most fun to use. There's certainly a lot of fun to high risk high reward weapons that you need to get close, and they might do loads or they might do nothing. I think he's just always struggled to justify his points cost of almost 600 points compared with the other options. Overwatch isn't quite as powerful as it was in 8th edition, and compared with the other frontline knights, he's not quite as strong in melee, but does need to get close if he wants to be using those weapons. Otherwise though, I don't think there's a massive amount separating the knights. I've never been the most convinced about the knight paladin, I'm just not sure that the rapid fire battle cannon really justifies its increased points cost, though I guess he can make it better with relics. And I must admit, while I'm a really big fan of the Knight Gallant, I feel like it's a unit that can be far better against certain opponents. If you're playing someone with a few chaff units who's screening intelligently, then there's a good chance they'll be able to hold it back for a turn or two, while it just deletes a couple of chaff units, and they can choose to either shoot at it if it makes sense, or just ignore it and focus on other targets. Moving on to the forces of the Chaos Marines now. The units I chose for the worst unit were perhaps the Fallen, and though their data sheet isn't particularly bad and actually fairly flexible, they're just pretty annoying to fit into any sort of usable army right now. You have to bring them in their own detachment if you want the Legion traits, and remain as a bit of an afterthought for Games Workshop in the rules, where you can't really play them as a full army. Otherwise, in honourable mentions, we have the Land Raiders again, and I thought I'd mention Mutilators as well, who are at least reasonably tanky, but not all that easy to deliver into close combat. They only have a 4-inch movement. They run the risk of being let down by one of their rolls on their random statistics. If you roll AP-1 or just damage 1, they're not going to be doing all that much in close combat if you're fighting a target with multi-wounds and a decent save. Next up we come to Death Guard, and I think that the new codex has made the vast majority of their own unique units very decent indeed, with some of the main subpar ones coming from the core Chaos Space Marine codex. We've talked enough about Land Raiders, though I feel like they probably are the single worst choice for Codex Death Guard and don't even do the durability thing amazingly compared with all of those minus one demon engines. But otherwise things like the Predator tank, which isn't terrible as an anti-tank platform, but is completely outclassed by the Plague Burst Crawler, which has those damaged D3 plus 3 entropy cannons, and also a nice Ignore's line of sight gun, while being miles and miles tougher. I think also cultists do kind of struggle for a place within the Codex. They don't get obsec like Poxwalkers, Poxwalkers are far tougher and have fearless for chaff purposes, and can even do massive damage with mortal wounds with their stratagem. Literally the only reasons to take cultists are cheap units to do actions, and if you want your chaff unit to contribute a tiny bit of ranged firepower. Every single competitive Death Guard list that I've seen has used Poxwalkers instead. Next we have the Thousand Sons, and we get to mention the Land Raider for the last time now. But otherwise for their unique units, I'm a bit underwhelmed by both the Mutilith Vortex Beast and the Zangor Enlightened. The Vortex Beast is a bit of a peculiar one, a bunch of random fairly close range effects that makes it want to get into the heart of the enemy army, though it's not really all that powerful at dealing any sort of direct damage. I guess it's not too bad defensively, but I do feel it's kind of ignorable, and is likely to get overlooked for other options. The Zangor Enlightened with those auto-wounded great bows can be a fair bit more interesting. They really are dependent on a Shaman hovering nearby to make them hit a bit better though, and I feel that with even some maximal buffs on them and a bunch of auto-wounds, they only ever really amount to being okay in firepower and aren't all that tough to take out in return. For the Chaos Demons, I think that perhaps the ranged fire support and big chariot options are some of the worst, and I struggled to pick an outright winner for this one. Skull Cannons and Soul Grinders both have issues. The Skull Grinder has kind of passable firepower, its defence is okay, and its melee is terrible. I guess it could be worse for a corn army to sit on an objective. Soul Grinder's quite expensive for what you get, just don't really do all that much with that weapon skill and ballistic skill 4+, plus, and will be eagerly awaiting the Demon Engine updates that make them hit a bit better. And the Burning Chariot of Zinch is very fragile for its points cost, but without particularly strong damage output to make up for that. It's okay both in shooting and combat, though not really stand out. For Chaos Knights, it's the Knight Desecrator that wins in my book. The Laz Impulsor might have a fun strength of 14, and it does perhaps have a niche against Toughness 7 vehicles, but I think it competes particularly poorly against the Thermal Cannon, which already does that job fine. I think to be worth taking, you really need to upgrade it to the Relic version, and for pure strength in Chaos Knights, you might well be better to go with a more flexible loadout, Maybe a despoiler armed with double thermal cannons for some massive anti-tank firepower and still being able to step on people in melee. 
for the Craft World Elder, I've chosen Striking Scorpions, who I don't think are doing an excellent job of repping Kane at the moment. Despite a 3 plus armor save, they're still fairly fragile. They're not very easy to get into close combat. They only have Deep Strike, where maybe some forward deployment might be a better option. And for a fairly slow unit that's not that easy to get into melee, I just don't think that their damage output is quite strong enough. AP0 chainsaws just aren't going to cut it against most foes, and they'll struggle to deal with space marines, let alone tougher targets like vehicles. Otherwise, for an honourable mention, I think the Wraith Knight is also having issues. It's got a very similar stat line to Imperial Knights, but it doesn't have an entire codex of options of support to give it things like extra relics or warlord traits, and unlike Imperial Knights, you're still spending quite a lot of points on the super heavy detachments. 3 command points for 1 or 6 command points for 3 just really is a hefty price to pay on top of its already kind of mediocre stats. Next we have the recent Codex Drakari, which I thought was a thoroughly great codex, and even after going through very carefully, I really struggled to pick out units that just weren't all that strong. I eventually settled on Beast Packs, and in particular the Chimerae and the Fiends as opposed to the Razorwing Flocks. I still like to stress that I don't think that these are particularly bad units in any way, but are just maybe a little bit limited and less flexible than the other Drakari units. Their base stats are good, but they have the annoying restriction of having to fly around with a Beastmaster if they don't want their leadership to be rubbish. They don't get power from pain or any synergies with Colts or Covens, and I feel like you could achieve the same job with Witches or Helions or something instead. I must admit I still quite like the Razor Wings though, they'll do almost literally nothing in terms of damage output, but 12 points for a fast annoying screening unit with 4 wounds, they're guaranteed to waste your opponents more time than how many points they cost. On to the Space Clowns now, and Harlequins don't really have all that many options to choose from, but the Void Weaver. But the Void Weaver seems to have always been fairly underwhelming. I don't think it quite meshes as well with the army's core playstyle, fighting, falling back, and gamey shenanigans with powerful close range units. It's just kind of a gun platform with only 6 wounds, and it's going to need many turns of firepower to make its points cost back. They can be annoying to shift with minus 1 to hit and a 4 plus invul, but they can take very heavy damage from small arms, or even just being charged by a normal squad of space marines or something. Next up we come to the forces of the hive mind with the Tyranids. For me some of their spore related creations really don't help them out all that much, and perhaps the one that I think is one of the worst value is the Mucolid Spore. It is pretty cheap at only 22 points, but it's got really bad defence. At only 3 inch movement there's a good chance it's never going to use that mortal wound bomb effect, and even when it does you're paying 22 points for an average of 2 mortal wounds on the enemy unit. Against a lot of targets like hordes, you're quite likely to kill significantly less points of models than the model was worth in the first place. I'm not saying they're entirely useless, it is 22 points for very cheap screening units, but they will die as soon as something looks at them, and even in the best case scenario their damage output is kind of underwhelming. Otherwise though, I feel fairly similarly about Spore Mines for similar reasoning. Fun when they get created by a Biovore or something, but with Toughness 1 not exactly something I'd invest points in myself. I think the Pyrovore struggles to make itself any sort of tempting choice. It's got quite a short range flame attack, is fairly slow, and not particularly tough or good in combat either. And finally the Spore Assist, which is technically a fortification, so maybe I shouldn't have included it. But this thing would have to be far more annoying to want to include it for its points cost. As it stands, it's a bit of a liability where it can get tagged in combat but not fall back. Its shooting isn't accurate, and again, it's not even all that tough. For the Tyranids worshippers, the Gene Stealer Cult, I thought that the Brood Brothers Heavy Weapon team stood out as a particularly poor option. They're not exactly a great choice in the Guard Codex either, have a sort of okay damage output, but are hilariously fragile to enemy return fire. It means they're often prime targets and will often likely never get to shoot. The Gene Stealer Cult ones are even worse than the Guard ones though because they don't really get any useful regimental traits or orders, you only get their base stat line. I think cult players are going to be basically better with anything else in terms of firepower, whether that's neophytes, Achilles Ridge Runners, or even just heavy weapon squads in Brood Brother infantry squads. Next up we come to the Greenskins, and I think it had to be the Stomper topping the list here. Throughout the whole of 8th and 9th edition, this thing has just been crazily overcosted for how much it does. I think you need to take off something like another 300 points worth of points cost to try and make this thing more usable. With costing as much as it is, it makes it really problematic for including in any sort of 2000 point match playlist, as you can't even fit three of them in a super heavy detachment there for them to get clan traits. It gets slapped by the super heavy auxiliary detachment tax, and the only way to make it efficient is to go for a quite risky cast of Visions in the Smoke from Evil Sons, which does make its guns a bit better, but also requires quite a lot of investment both in terms of the weird boy and also some boys to make him more likely to cast. 
For honourable mentions, I'm really not a big fan of the Blitzer Bomber. That thing's very expensive at 155 points. Its damage output is just dreadful compared with the Was Bomb Blaster Jet. And if you want to use Fly and Edbutt to cast around some mortal wounds, then the Burner Bomber is the way to go. I think Flash Gits are a bit too expensive for what they are. At over 30 points with just 2 Toughness 4 wounds with a 4 plus save, they're really quite easy to kill. And it's quite annoying that their Snazguns are heavy weapons, so they'll go back down to hitting on 5s whenever they move and shoot. Just not great in terms of damage output or durability. Finally, I thought that Gretchen deserved a special mention. Now they've gone up to 5 points for a stat line that used to cost you 3 points. Their damage output was bad before, and now it is worse. And they'll now struggle to compete against basic boys, even for grunt work. As just for 30 more points, you can get Toughness 4 across your whole unit, and they'll actually be really quite dangerous in a scrap. I think they're still not useless with things like Grot Shields, making one Orc unit almost impossible to gun down for a turn. But between the command points and the cost of the Gretchen themselves, that's now quite an expensive strategy. Next up, we come to Necrons, and again, I think that this is one of the codexes that Games Workshop has done quite well with. The vast majority of the Necron units remain very usable. They did give the Canoptic Reanimator a very hefty points discount, but I still think it might be one of the worst units in the entire codex, as just 6 low toughness wounds just really isn't enough to justify 80 points. If it's exposed, then it makes sense to shoot first, and while its reanimation protocol buff is really quite good, there's a lot of counterplay to it, you can just completely ignore the unit that we're going to be reanimated better or shoot down the Fragile Reanimator first. Otherwise, the Hexmark Destroyer is a really fun model let down by subpar rules. It's a fairly fragile unit that's likely not to make its points cost back on the turn that it comes in, even when it's firing against its absolute most ideal targets. I guess it can have some use as a Command Protocol caddy though, if you need something to deep strike alongside some flayed ones. Finally, we have the Super Heavy Obelisk, a very tough and somewhat annoying Lord of War, but doesn't really have any significant damage output to speak of. Again, combine that with super heavy detachment taxes, and I can't see many Necron players ever taking an obelisk. To be honest, that one might have been the better candidate for the top spot for Necrons in hindsight. Lastly, for the main factions, we come to Tau Empire, and as has been the case for quite a while now, it's the alien auxiliaries that get the short end of the stick. For the points, Crutox Riders have pretty bad ranged and melee damage, and only okay durability to make up with that, maybe only ever good for being a cheap screening unit. For honourable mentions, I felt I had to mention the 20 points tactical drone squads. The drones are all significantly cheaper when they're taken as attached drones for characters and squads, but they seem to be really trying to disincentivize tower players from taking drone spam en masse, as even the annoying shield drones can't really hack it at that cost. Not really any good reason to take these now, unless you have absolutely no other sources of attached drones on characters or units. Finally, we have Vespid Stingwings, fairly fragile and kind of underwhelming damage output. I think they haven't been helped by Space Marines going to two wounds. Their gun that was quite good at killing them before now is effectively half as good against them. Finally, I thought we'd wrap up with just a few of the other mini factions. Inari are only characters, but of the three, I'd say that the Vizark is the weakest. I think the others just add a lot more between Irene's psychic shenanigans and the Incarn's ability to pop up places, and this guy's the only one who I haven't seen cropping up in competitive lists. For the Inquisition, unless we're delving into all of the named Inquisitors, I feel like Acolytes, for all their advantages, just are a bit too pricey. 10 points for basically a Guardsman stat line just isn't that great, and you really have to work very hard with some of the Inquisitor synergies to make their special weapons worth it. Otherwise, the standard Demon Host is another one I might pay attention to. It's cheap, but it doesn't really do much. For the up-and-coming Zotes, I think that the Archivist is their weakest datasheet. It's hard to argue that he's just the worst Zote in the entire game of 40k right now, and definitely needs a buff. And finally, for the Death Corps of Krieg, if we are only looking at unique units that aren't characters, it's literally a choice between Combat Engineers or Death Riders, so I'd have to go Combat Engineers out of the two. To be honest, Combat Engineers are pretty great with those gas bombs. Using Grenadiers can get some serious close-range damage going, but Death Riders are just amazing right now. I made an entire video about them. It's kind of weird them being one of the tankiest guard units out there right now. So that brings us to the end of the list, with some of the worst units for each faction in the game. I look forward to hearing what you agree with and disagree with, have I underrated some hidden gems, or have I missed some other important units that belong on the faction's dumpster heap right now? I look forward to having a read later on. If you've enjoyed the video and you'd like to see more like it, feel free to subscribe to Auspex Tactics, where I do try and keep the 40k content coming as regularly as I can, usually with new videos out every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel lately, I would just like to mention that the channel has a Patreon page, which you can find down in the video description. Making all these videos does take a fair amount of time, 
Particularly quite long faction overall comparisons like this, so if you are enjoying regularly, any support is massively appreciated. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, such as seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry to the channel's prize giveaways, with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.